20 years, Bill O'Reilly has reigned supreme as the number one talk show host on cable news on Fox News. But today, he is no longer. Yesterday, Fox News announced that he was fired after the New York Times reported five cases that were settled for more than $13 million dealing with the issue of sexual harassment. Fox News also hired uh, in a, a law firm to investigate claims, and they said other women actually came forward to talk about the issue of sexual harassment. These women had accused him of everything from verbal abuse to unwanted advances to lewd behavior. In a statement, uh, Fox said, after a thorough and careful review of the allegations, the company and Bill O'Reilly have agreed that Bill O'Reilly will not be returning to the Fox News channel. Bill O'Reilly was on vacation in Italy and was preparing to come back sooner, so Fox News was forced to actually take this action. He was supposed to be back on the air on Monday, and that's why they made this decision so quickly. Yesterday, he posted a picture of him uh, meeting with the Pope in Italy uh, in their VIP line. He released this statement, which reads in part, it is tremendously disheartening that we part ways due to completely unfounded claims. Now, of course, the 67-year-old anchor had a loyal following, which earned Fox a hefty uh, 100 million bucks a year. But advertisers were fleeing in droves, not just from his show, but also from the network. The other problem, other executives in other parts of 20th Century Fox said keeping O'Reilly around made difficult for them to also deal with the issue in their various departments. So there was a deluge of folks who were putting pressure on Rupert Murdoch and his, his two sons to part ways with Fox News' biggest money maker. Now, over the years, uh, Bill O'Reilly has made all kinds of crazy, wild, and ridiculous statements. Um, some call them sexist, some call them racist. Here's a compilation of the lowlights of Bill O'Reilly's career. The solution to the epidemic of violent crime in poor black neighborhoods is to actively discourage pregnancies out of marriage, to impose strict discipline in the public schools, including mandatory student uniforms, and to create a zero tolerance policy for gun and drug crimes, imposing harsh mandatory prison time on the offender. I have studied this issue for 30 years, and my sincere belief is that the African American community is being devastated by the collapse of the family. And it all goes back to um, an alienation of young black men in this country for a number of reasons, but primarily because they're angry they didn't have a family and their father abandoned them and all of that. White people don't force black people to have babies out of wedlock. That's a personal decision, a decision that has devastated millions of children and led to disaster both socially and economically. Stability equals prosperity. And in many black precincts, there's chaos in the streets, in the schools, in the homes. The lack of involved fathers leads to young boys growing up resentful and unsupervised. When was the last time you saw a public service ad telling young black girls to avoid becoming pregnant? Blame guns, poor education, lack of jobs. Rarely do they define the problem accurately. 72% of babies in African American community are born out of wedlock now. Why isn't there a campaign by you and the first lady to address that problem very explicitly. Young black men commit homicides at a rate 10 times greater than whites and Hispanics combined. What do the race hustlers and limousine liberals yell about? The number of black men in prison for selling drugs. Oh, it's so unfair. It's a nonviolent crime. And blacks are targeted. That is one of the biggest lies in the history of this country. There are actually a lot of people in this country who are racist, and you just uh, refused. You, I mean, I, I really uh, have to wonder, like, all right. I mean, I, I, mean, I have to wonder about why you, you have, can't though. see what's happening, because I, most Americans are not racist. They're I, not. I, really? So how many yeah, black really? friends do you have? Really? How many black friends do you have? Thousands more Americans are being murdered because police are being more passive since the Ferguson situation and the Black Lives Matter protests. 
Not I didn't you. hear a word she said. I was, I was looking at the James Brown wig. <laughs> <laughs> if we have a picture of James, it's the same. It's the same one. Yeah. Right. Trust me, folks, we could have uh, put together an even longer video uh, showing some of the crazy comments uh, Bill O'Reilly has made over the years. Joining us right now in our Washington, D.C. studio is the president of Media Matters, Angelo uh, Carazon. Also jo uh, joining us in studio, Angela Peoples, director of Get Equal, Ray Baker, host of the Public Agenda podcast, and Kim Klatchik, contributor at Pol Politics. Uh, glad to have you, Kim, as well. So, Angela, I want to start with you. What's interesting is, when you look at the history of Bill O'Reilly, how he has denigrated women who have made sexual harassment claims. When he went on CBS this morning and was asked about Megyn Kelly's comment, oh, I'm not gonna trash, uh, the company's been good to me, and if folks don't like it, leave the company. He has operated as a bully, he has berated people, and numerous women have talked about his lewd behavior, and this from a guy who, who sermonized from his bully pulpit trying to talk about the morals and values of America. That's exactly right. I mean, Bill O'Reilly... Uh, 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 Angelo? Mm -hmm. An Angelo. I'm sorry, yeah. Angelo. No, that's exactly right. That's the business model. His business model was misogyny, preying on racial anxieties, and misinformation. And he was actually rewarded for that at Fox News. I mean, it, this was not a decision that Fox News made of their own volition. They were forced to do this. Just three weeks ago, they re-signed his contract. They knew not just about all of the reports from these women, um, but it actively worked to cover them up and to silence them uh, and signed a, re signed a contract anyway. They needed to be forced by outside groups led by people in the Women's March, consumer groups like Sleeping Giants, and civil rights advocates groups like Color of Change. Angelo, they hated me. He hated Media Matters. He I mean, he despised <laughs> your organization. Yes, I mean, we've been we've been around since 20, 2004, and every day we have been tracking what Bill O'Reilly says and holding him accountable for the misinformation and for the worst examples of vitriol. I mean, I looked yesterday, we wrote 6,550 pieces of content about just Bill O'Reilly um, in the 12 years that we've, we've existed. And I think that that did help ultimately sink it too, which was that when advertisers were making a decision, they were not looking just about you know, dropping Bill O'Reilly's show, they were preparing to drop all of Fox News because they they finally started to internalize what the culture was over there, and they could no longer be associated with that because of how that affected their own staffs and employees and the message that that sent. Angela. <laughs> yes, that that, uh, that that vowel sound got me a little tripped up, but I like your name, Angelo. Um, yeah, I, I think that th there's an additional point here that should be made to really emphasize the that the power and the impact that the grassroots organizing had here. I think, you know, there's a, a conversation that's being had that maybe part of the reason that this shift came is because uh, the Murdoch family is trying to begin to change the culture at Fox News, and I think that, as Angelo said, that that's not true at all. They actually are only bowing to the pressure um, when it comes to the, their their bottom line because we have activists uh, th that are holding, pushing for corporate accountability. And this is actually a trend that we have seen um, be very impactful across a host of issues. There's been a big pu the, the push that we see from corporations um, that are, are, and even the in, um, institutions like the NAA, or the, the, NA, the um, sorry, college uh, sports organizations uh, to be uh, against these states that are passing anti-LGBT laws, These uh, the transgender bill um, in North Carolina. It's coming because corporations, um, banks, um, are getting pressured by by their um, um, customers to to not be in business in states or with institutions that are pushing bigoted policies. So this is a trend that we're seeing, and I think that it shows that in fact the corporate accountability is is uh, working much more effectively than we see political accountability in our country. Hey Ray Baker, uh, yesterday I did Charles Payne show uh, on Fox <coughs> News. And of course, they still have the big posters up of all the Fox News personalities. I love, I, I, I love this one here. I love this one here. Uh, that was that was a photo. Uh, the, uh, a poster says, "Nobody moves this man." <laughs> the O'Reilly Factor, number one cable news program. Ray Baker, he's been moved. He's been moved, and amazingly, he's still unrelenting, calling these unfounded claims even to the very end. We see that there's this evidence of persistent sexism, and we can obviously see from the clips earlier today that there's racism in his tone, even when he called Dr. Mark Lamont Hill, a PhD having professor, oh, you look like a crack dealer. <laughs> but nonetheless, uh, Mr. O'Reilly is unrelenting to the very end, calls these unfounded claims. When the one of the earlier New York Times pieces comes out, he disparages people who didn't 
didn't call into the quote anonymous hotline and even made light of that. So to the very end, his smug, pompous attitude has been his undoing, and it's good to see for those who are against issues of racism, sexism, and all the other vitriol that Mr. O'Reilly has been putting out. Kim? Um, let's just say innocent until proven guilty. Uh, if this has been going on, like they said, for decades, why are people just now coming forward and saying anything? Um, and if you think actually, that... Actually, actually, Kim, Kim. Yes. Um, I need to correct you. First off, this is not coming forward later. The first settlement that took place with Bill O'Reilly and sexual harassment took place in 2004. It was 13 years ago. So okay, this is and not he still was there coming. as a front runner. He was still there. So okay, that means there's Kim. a culture within the Fox yes. News, and getting rid of Bill O'Reilly is not going to stop it. It was going on deaf ears. Whose ears? I think that it's him. Well, Kim, for, 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 for first, one second. Let's deal with some facts here. First, Roger Ailes, who was, of course, the leader of Fox News, the one who oversaw all of this, mm -hmm. they, got, they got rid of him. That's okay. first. Now you have Bill O'Reilly. Also, that was a vice president at Fox News, Fox News Latino who demanded oral sex from uh, another woman. He was fired. The controller okay. made, made racist comments. She was fired. What you've seen is uh, where clearly the law, the uh, clearly Murdoch brothers, his sons, his sons who now run the company, they are trying to impose a new culture and clearly the advertising pressure got to Fox News. And I, I also I want to add, I think that to your, to your point, Kim, it is about culture, right? And just as there, we, we see these instances of racism and sexism and sexual abuse um, happening at Fox News, this also happens in newsrooms uh, across, the, across the country. And I think that hopefully this will be um, both a, a, an example to not just those who believe that they can speak to women in any way that they want to, that they can intimidate women um, or that they can say racist things and, and, get, uh, and get away with it or brush it under rug, that this is actually um, a not tolerable and not just tolerable, whether or not you can get away with it in your in your organization or whether or not your 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 company um, is backing you or paying down your lawsuits that the the people the consumers the customers the american public our consciousness is evolving away from that I, those ideologies and those identities and we're not going to tolerate that a point kim to your point i want to bring in one second i want to bring in rashad robinson executive director of colorchange.org uh rashad uh you had one women coming forward two dogged reporting of the New York Times, three massive pressure placed on advertisers. Uh, the Fox News upfronts uh, will be taking place in two weeks, and they could not go forward with those upfronts with companies saying, not only are we considering, not only are we pulling ads from Bill O'Reilly's show, we're going to pull ads from your network, and this is also going to bleed over to the other 21st century Fox networks. I think you're absolutely right, Roland. And the, the other the other couple of points that I think are important to put in, in into the room on this is that we filed a brief along with two other organizations um, into London um, as 21st Century Fox was trying to engage in mergers. And in and in Great Britain, they have a higher standard for um, how businesses do their. Um, work when they want to buy other media practices and whether or not they're good businesses. And and so 21st century was going to start having problems throughout right. Europe if they tried to expand their um, empire um, because of the practices that were happening in the United States. The Murdochs care about money first and foremost. And this was going to continue to have an impact on them far and wide. They were also seeing an exodus of women um, in, you know, stars like Megyn Kelly and others who were leaving or folks who would not take jobs at Fox. Um, and so this was going to have long-term impact. And you mentioned the Murdoch sons, and that's really important. I think people have to recognize that the, the sons were taking over for the father. And they didn't want Roger Ailes or Bill O'Reilly or anyone else sort of patting them on the head and saying, hey, 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 young, young guy, that not that these guys are actually that young. Um, I, I made this network. I am more powerful than you. I can't be touched. In some ways, they're trying to clean up this house so that they can actually run the business and that they're the ones in charge. The exodus of over 77 um, um, uh, advertisers, at a certain point for us, as we were calling advertisers, as we were having our members call advertisers, as 300,000 of our members signed petitions and made, started making phone calls, um, we got to the point where 
it got really hard to find an advertiser that was willing to stay. The advertisers that were staying um, on the O'Reilly show were the things like the Elvis gospel album <laughs> and uh, the gotcha. Invis line. It wasn't the sort of big companies that advertise on shows. And, and, Angela, Angelo, I got, I got to ask you this, Angelo, mm -hmm. and that is, uh, it, it, it has to be, if you're ludicrous, you're probably <laughs> kicking back <laughs> drinking a Pepsi because th this is a guy who attacked Ludacris, who attacked Pepsi, said how he denigrated women, and that's what caused Pepsi to cancel the endorsement deal with Ludacris. Oh, payback is a mother. And he's led a lot of boycotts. In fact, he led boycotts against any publication uh, that would write about the sexual harassment claims a few years ago. He was actually encouraging his audience to contact the advertisers on those outlets. Um, and he used to keep a running list on his website uh, if you would talk about his sexual harassment stories uh, and the reports that had come forward. So I think there are a lot of people that were the victims and subjects of Bill O'Reilly's harassment and intimidation in order to keep this story under wraps, along with the, sort of his other discrimination and bigotry. And, and now that there all sort of feeling finally this accountability, but I want to underscore how much work this took for something that shouldn't have taken a lot of work. I mean, Andrea Mrakis, the first person that came forward many years ago, was on tape. We have audio of Bill O'Reilly sexually harassing somebody. Um, and not only did Fox News not act, but it took an enormous outpouring of effort and energy externally from the outside uh, in order to bring this accountability. And that's why I don't think this is the end of the story. To Rashad's point, I, the, the board is still meeting today, and I think there's one still vestige of Roger Ailes there, an individual who's a co-president who not not only re-signed Bill O'Reilly's mm -hmm. contract, but helped cover up the reports against uh, Roger Ailes and the reports against Bill O'Reilly. And I think that he's still, uh, I think that he will leave as well if Fox News really wants to uh, assuage the anxiety that, uh, that advertisers felt. Because advertisers really are concerned that there will be a lot more to come and they're no, they don't want to be associated with this anymore. End of story. And, a and, a and, Angela, and Angela, I got to say this here, to have the President of the United States last week come out and say, oh, Bill did nothing wrong. Well, that's one sexual harasser endorsing another. Exactly. I was going to say, you know, it, 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 again, it seems like the, the standard um, for, for the uh, media personalities is higher than for the president. But one question that I, I think uh, I'm interested to hear um, Rashad and Angelo's views on, and also I think we'll have to see uh, more in the future, is yes, the um, Fox News is able to um, assuage, maybe may be able to assuage the concerns of their um, advertisers with this move, but what about their audience? You know, we saw it. it we We've seen reports that as these claims have um, gone out and as Bill O'Reilly has been more embattled with these sexual harassment allegations, that his audience and his viewership has, has gone up. So I'm interested to see and, and hear what folks' thoughts are about how Fox News is going to reconcile the, 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 the disagreement between their advertisers and their audience. Can we all be perfectly and, honest? And we're shocked. Can we be perfectly honest? Go ahead, go ahead. If, if Bill O'Reilly's name was Bill Clinton, he'd be on tonight. But but so before before we even go into something like <laughs> that, that, hold on. But I'm sorry, Angela. <laughs> before we even go somewhere like that, no. Kim made a point earlier that I did want to come back to. Mm -hmm. Attorney Lisa Bloom has done great work talking about why women don't come forward. Thank and whenever you. we start our conversation with how come you didn't come forward that. earlier, that's always disingenuous because there are so many people. As Roland alluded to with the outset of the show, Bill O'Reilly has a bully pulpit. The women it's called not a coming bully forward? pulpit for a reason. So there's a reason why people, because they value their jobs, they know that there's a culture of intimidation there and so long as they don't have the allies in place to uh, get there and fight for them that they feel comfortable to come out and say these kind of things they're not gonna have it and so then when they finally do we then accuse them well too little too late that's not that's what unfair. I was saying that's not what no, I was actually, saying actually actually I think that that's what you were saying unfortunately no think, that's not no, what no, I was no, saying let me, let me, let I was me, saying the people that actually was speaking the reports one actually, second let me, let me, one let me, one let me second this. Rashad yes so, 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 so I think that's what you're saying. This is 2007, not 1996. I am not on here to defend. It's 2017. I am not, no, 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 2017. I'm sorry, 2017, no, not, 1990, not 1996. And I'm not on here to defend um, Bill Clinton. You're the only one bringing up Bill Clinton's name. What we are on here talking about is in 2017, do we hold a high enough standard in corporate America where a man does not get to um, abuse and create a hostile and dangerous environment for women. And can we all agree that that is not okay? Of can we all agree? agree? No, can we all agree? Can we all agree? 
can we all agree that, that a racist environment should not be created for these folks? And can we got also it. agree Kim? that hundreds of thousands of people speaking out are good enough to be listened to? Kim, Kim, 30 seconds, go. I, we can all agree on that, but what I'm saying is the people that were actually taking the harassment deals, like they were getting these complaints from those being harassed, they did nothing. Because it's in the it's, culture. Exactly. It's in it's their in the culture to do so. So for us to say that Bill, Bill O'Reilly is was at the head of that culture. It's one not second, Angela, the Angela, culture. Angela, Angela, one second. Kim, finish your comment. Uh, to get rid of Bill O'Reilly and to think that this is going to stop, it's not. I mean, you okay, look at the top, I, you had Roger Ailes. They're getting rid of people that you see. What about the people we don't see? Okay, Kim, Kim, let me repeat this again. <laughs> okay. Again, Roger Ailes, you didn't see, gone. The controller, gone. Head of Fox News Latino, who you didn't see, gone. Other executives, Gone. There were people who were fired after Roger Ailes. Gone. So Kim, you are wrong. Those and taking so the complaints hopefully, should and be And hopefully, uh, Kim, and hopefully other people who were covering this up be gone as well. A peaceful protest turned deadly. 37-year-old black man was shot and killed by Baton Rouge police. His hands are in the air and you still get shot by the cops. Oh my God, please don't tell me he's dead. We're not gonna let hate define us. Race is a big part of this. If truly all lives matter, then all lives need to matter equally. What we require is action. What we require is accountability. We understand that black lives do matter. We will keep focus on this issue. News One Now, every weekday morning at seven on TV One.